Hello. It's such a pleasure and honor to have you here, Quartet Teologa, all together, all the four of you at different places. It's fantastic what modern technology can do for us. And um, we do a little interview about uh, quartet music, about you, the Quartetto Tiroga and the Handler Verlag, our connection. And um, please let me just right away start to ask the first question and you are free to answer um, whenever, whoever likes to answer. So when, can you remember when was the first time when you, the four of you met and uh, you decided, okay, that sounds nice. Let, let us uh, go forward and let us make music together as a quartet. And then when, when did it come to be, okay, let's do a professional quartet? Yes, it was in uh, 2003 uh, when we performed for the first time. Uh, Tibran and me, we met in the Spanish Youth Orchestra and uh, we were the founders of the quartet. And then a few years later, Elena and Josep joined. And uh, I think it was a, a, a dream of all of us to, to be part of a string quartet and become this dream a reality in, in our lives. Can you remember when you used the for, for the first time a Handel or text edition in your life? I guess it was not when you were already orchestra musician or even a quartet player, maybe it was quite earlier when you were young and learned your instrument. Can you remember? I, I'm just curious to, to know because being the head of Handel Verlag. I can remember the first one. I don't know if it's the first one I used. I don't think it was the first one I used, but I remember the first one I bought with my own money. Yeah, that one I, with my savings and I bought being 17 years old, I bought Brahms violin sonatas. And I, I remember perfectly well buying the score, going myself, buying to the shop and ordering specifically the Henle edition. I, I remember that. I actually also remember because uh, in Valencia, when I was a student, it was not very easy to, to get hold on, on music. And I remember um, a trip I made to Vienna and I went to a very, very nice shop, very famous shop there. And um, I bought the Dreger Suites. Ooh. And uh, of course for viola and, uh, and the Arpeggione Sonata, which uh, of course I still use with me and with my students uh, all the time. Yes, I also remember that of course as a student, I also played before with Henle, but you know, students sometimes were with photocopy or a teacher of another student and uh, not so good. But then, of course, I remember like getting the, the first like real one that is, was mine. It was also Brahms, uh, the first uh, cello sonata. And I remember the excitement of the paper, of a real nice paper, and to, to do with the pencil, you know, to do a slayer. And I thought, well, I, I better, you know, do the, the right slayers and the right fingers because I don't want to erase everything here and there and make it all dirty. I, I want to keep it all nice in this beautiful paper. <laughs> Yes, in, in my case, I, I remember I was 17 years old and uh, I, had to, I had to practice a Beethoven first sonata. And it was one of the, the major works I was studying at, at that moment. And I told him, eh, eh, Professor, eh, which edition sh sh should I buy? And he told me, absolutely for Beethoven, you should go for the, the, for the Henle. And it's the one I have right here, the, the Beethoven sonatas. Very good professor, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> and Jose, I very much like your answer because both edition you mentioned uh, is my edition, you know? I did the Apigione myself and I did the Riga together with the late uh, Franz Bayer, um, the violin mm. professor. But now it comes to something uh, maybe very interesting for other string quartet players, especially the young ones. Uh, all of you quartet players enjoyed some uh, very um, yeah, helpful teaching from other string quartet professional players. So maybe you can tell us about your teachers. I, I mean, not at the university, the, the kind of standard teaching, but uh, the lessons, but um, more the master classes you were um, 
enjoying. And of course, um, you remember some connection with Handler? I remember, I, I remember personally that our three main teachers, so to say, which were uh, Rainer Schmidt from the Hagen String Quartet, uh, Hato Bayerle from the Albanberg Quartet, and uh, Walter Lebiden from the La Salle Quartet. Those are our musical fathers, so to say, in different ways. But they are, I remember they were always very, very careful in pointing out that we should be as critical as possible when uh, choosing the materials that we had. And of course, Henle was always on the desk as a, as a, as a, as a reference that one, should, uh, that one should check. They also were also uh, very um, stressing how important were, uh, the, were the critical reports that were appearing in the editions. And they were always telling us do not trust editions who do not have a very clear critical report. And that is something that Henle does very, very well. And that is why we trust Henle because, because the critical report is, is, is always uh, uh, very precise and, and, you, in, and you know why the decisions have been taken. And this is something that we learn from our teachers who also, of course, encouraged us to go to the primal sources, to the autographs, to the manuscripts, but when it came to, to, to editions, they really insisted check editions that do have a proper critical report. And in that sense, Henle has never failed us uh, in, because we can always trust that there will be a very serious work behind the editorial process. Now Henle claims to publish the complete core repertoire for a string quartet we almost have all of the important works now in our catalog. The last one was the complete edition of Mozart's string quartets in four volumes. So uh, I would like to know if you sorely miss something in our repertoire. Yes. I mean, th there is small things, but talking about the, core, the quartet, string quartet repertoire, uh, there is uh, one big name that we are uh, waiting with, uh, we're really looking forward because we've seen in the web, in the web page that uh, Bartok six string quartets oh, yes. are going to be uh, edited soon and in progress with uh, Lamsula Song 5, which it can be like probably the, the biggest expert in Bartok. So I think there's going to be something very, very, very big, big news for all string quartet players. Really looking forward to this. Thank you for mentioning this, Helena. Uh, of course. Uh, this is uh, one of the big missing things in our catalog, the Bartok, the six Bartok quartets. And as you said before, it's on the way to be published. We start this year with number one and number two, and then the, the other one will follow. Uh, one thing that probably is missing, but it's a titanic um, uh, effort to, to make it uh, probably come true. Uh, it's been a Spanish quartet, of course, the, the Boccherinis yeah. and the Brunetti still quartets. Huh? They are incredible works, really a lot of them, really, really uh, so much, but it would be fantastic to have the, the Henry Verlag um, producing some of them. No, but it is true that for to have, so to say, you know, also the, at least that the other father together with Haydn of, of the string quartet as a genre, because Boccherini, we forget it, but it was very important yes. in building a string quartet uh, historically as a genre to at least have you know its presence you know in the in the catalog of the of Hellefelag. Of course I miss also I would love to have you know because you your editions are so careful and they are so trustworthy and you can rely on what you do and how you do it. Of course I would like to have more things from you. I was I was thinking where, when will you make like Janacek, for example, or the, the, the Russian masters or the Scandinavian masters like Sibelius Grieg or, or um, so, I mean, I'm looking forward for the coming years in everything that you have to do, because I'm sure as it has always been, it will be a, a source which will be very reliable and will help our work and the future generations to to have new readings because uh, with the classics we need to so uh, 
every every generation has to make their own reading of the of a classic. That's why a classic is a classic. And I'm missing as a Spanish and a Spanish string quartet something that would would not be as you said was saying Titanic, but we have three little treasures, the Arriaga string quartets, that has probably not been very well uh, treated by editors. And uh, I think that would be uh, something so interesting that uh, Henle takes, takes care of the, of the sources. Yeah, they deserve to be on the standard repertoire of yes. Euro Euro any, any European string quartet. Once the Henle Verlag edition of Ariaga, the three quartets will be out, I'm sure that we could, we should push the his music. I think you have a, a beautiful but a big responsibility in that sense, uh, being such probably the most trustworthy, you know, edition in, in nowadays. Uh, so, I mean, it, it is it is something that uh, we encourage you to do yeah. <laughs> because it can change the map of Europe in terms of what string quartet is, you know. So we think now we have the, you know, the heart of the most played works and now it's time to expand. And I think uh, to expand it in the direction to South West, to, to Spain uh, makes a lot of sense. Also, we, we need uh, artists like you to really perform these pieces. It's not only necessary to have a good edition, but you know, you have to have uh, musicians, ensembles to play the music and to teach at the university to the next generation. And then the repertoire might, uh, might expand. Let's go to the um, digital world. Uh, as you all know, we have launched a digital version of our text edition, the Handler Library app. What do you think about this type of uh, new digital scores? Will it be a part of the future of you musicians? Well, I think it's already present. Uh, I think everybody is uh, basically doing the migration to digital, yeah. little by little. And once you try it, uh, of course, there is always the feeling of having the actual paper, no? And that will yeah. never be be lost, and it's in, in, impossible to substitute that. But for like a like a tool for everyday work, it's really incredible. Everything you can do. But I, I, there's one thing that I think is, is, very, is very nice, that these layers of uh, music that you can have, especially when you're, um, you're performing with your quartet, but you're also teaching. We, four of us were teachers. So it's very practical to have you know, the music that you perform with your own fingers and your things, and another layer for the, for the one you're teaching, because you're telling them things, and you see the development in the, in the lessons, what they're doing, what are the problems, and you can just make all cycles and do everything you, you can do, and then you have your own music. And also one other feature that I find very good, especially for students, but also for us, is the recording. That have the possibility to record. Yeah. You don't have to exit the application, but right there, you just record yourself a little bit and then just listen. I mean, for students, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it's fantastic. Also, another tool that, we, that is fantastic for me is the, uh, the possibility to really access directly from the app to the critical comments. When there, is a, when there is a dot in the bar, you just click and then you have the explanation where, you know, where the hesitation comes from and where, what was the decision that you made as, a, as, a, as an editor uh, in terms, you, you based it on the autograph or you cho chose first edition. I mean, so that, that we also have the ability as musicians to make our own choice, you know, and, and we can immediately have an access directly on the spot. We just click and there, that I think is a fantastic feature, which proves also, again, it gives a feeling of trustworthiness in the material that you have. Another oh, yeah. feature that I find, I find so interesting is the famous uh, famous musician's fingerings. That's so great for us. I mean, it's so useful. Uh, uh, first of all, to, to know which were the finger the fingerings they were using in the 19th century, to a, which is a tool to understand the, the, the way they were performing. And that for us is so important to know, to know the, ta the, the, the taste, the tools, the ornaments they were using. 
and also from the, the from the great living uh, uh, players. That's fantastic and so useful for us. And uh, I have actually two two things. One that I like uh, very much. So the thing I, I like very much is not as profound as my colleague said, but I like the drag and drop symbols. The way you can change is so easy, so neat. The way you can, of course, change the color so you know it's not the original, but it looks very nice like the original. It's not just pencil, but it's very nice to the, to the eye. Yeah, my friends, I, I can see from your answers that you really work with the Henley app and you have a deep insight to the features we present. Um, I'm very much impressed. You really know what you're talking about. Uh, there are so many interesting things you said. This was a wonderful talk with you and I'm so grateful. Thank you very much and uh, hope to see you and hear you soon. And all the best to you wherever you are. All the best Thank to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.